let's talk about another way to add some display ability to our PIC circuit using RGB addressable LEDs, uh, commonly known as NeoPixels, but the actual name is WS2812B. I've built a circuit that controls four of them. Uh, they're kind of intensely bright, uh, painful to look at almost, so I 3D printed um, a little cover to diffuse the lights. But we have four individual RGB LEDs, and controlling them only takes one pin from the microcontroller. So a traditional LED would take a PWM signal to a single color of LED, um, and maybe it has current control or maybe it has a series resistor to uh, prevent there from being too much current. And by changing the duty cycle of the PWM, we can change the brightness of that LED. So if that was red and we wanted a full color LED, we would need three more, one for green and one, two more, one for green and one for blue. Um, and we put them in the same housing, but it would take three PWMs to drive. We don't really have enough pins, and we definitely don't have enough PWM pins on a small microcontroller like our PIC. So we're going to use this uh, WS2812B, which is three LEDs controlled by PWM, and it's only a controller inside. So the WS2812B kind of draw it as a box, and it gets a ground signal and is powered by five volts. So we'll have to grab that from the USB connector on our USB breakout. And it has one data in pin. And the neat thing about it is when we start setting it bits, the first 24 bits that represent the color will get stuck. The next 24 bits will get passed back out and get stuck in the next WS chip. So we can uh, chain them serially the data out of one to the data in of the next, and so on, to get uh, several LEDs um, in series, all controlled still by one pin from a microcontroller. Now they also recommend a capacitor uh, from five volts to ground of uh, one microfarad or 0 0.1 microfarads. And that's because when we turn on the LED, it might uh, suddenly get very bright very quickly and it might suck all the local current from that 5 volt source so the the capacitor on every chip or every other chip will supply that current when it changes brightness very quickly. So let's look at the data sheet for one of these chips. This particular version is an 8 millimeter LED so it's kind of a very big LED um, I bought them from SparkFun, but there are lots of other vendors for what they call NeoPixels, and they come in strips, and they come in matrices, and bars, and there's just lots and lots of these out there. So uh, they're very popular and very inexpensive, down to, say, like 10 or 15 cents per LED, which is pretty cheap. Um, but whoever invented them did not ever make a really nice data sheet for them. So every time we look at this data sheet, it's only two pages and not really a data sheet at all. Um, what we do really care about, though, um, is how do we send the bits to control the, the, uh, the color. And what's weird about this is that it's a one-wire input, so it's asynchronous, there's no clock. The digital bits we're sending, instead of being ones and zeros, uh, a logic one is going to be both a high and a low, and a logic zero is going to be both a high and a low. For the logic one, the high is longer than the low, and the opposite for the logic zero. And here is the timing specification. So when the pin is high, it needs to be high for 1.36 microseconds, and when it's low, it's for 0.35 microseconds. So that's on the order of a couple dozen clock cycles at our pick at 48 megahertz. So the timing is going to be kind of tight, and we have an allowable error of 150 nanoseconds. So we don't have to hit these numbers exactly, but we have to get pretty close. Let's look at um, the sample code. So I've written an H file and a C file as kind of a, a half library for this chip. Um, one thing I did was I made a uh, structure called WS color, which is three unsigned chars that are now linked together in this one new variable type. Um, so you can refer to a WS color with the .r, .g, and .b. That way it's easy to pass uh, 
uh, these three colors together as one unit in and out of functions. We have a setup function, which will initialize a timer for us to be able to do the timing uh, for those pulses. And then a function that sets the color that will both build an array of all the bits that we need to send, and then it will send them. And then to make the fancy uh, rainbow array that I demonstrated earlier, I, I stole this uh, function, uh, uh, hue, saturation, brightness to RGB value. Uh, so we'll use that at the end. So let's think about how are we going to take uh, the three 8-bit numbers that represent a color of our LED and turn them into the bits that we need to send to this uh, chip and there's no peripheral like UART or SPY or I2C to do it. So what we're going to do, have to do is called BitBang, which means we'll literally turn on the pin, we'll wait a certain amount of time, we'll turn off the pin, we'll wait a certain amount of time, we'll turn on the pin, uh, which is very like CPU intensive. There's no buffer that we put the data into and it automatically gets sent out. Um, so this is kind of like a, a um, not very sophisticated way of sending out the data. So we have a logic zero, which is going to be a uh, very relatively short um, high pulse and a longer low pulse, and a logic one, which is the opposite. It's kind of like a longer high pulse and a shorter low pulse. And the reason for this is if you have uh, zero volts for 50 microseconds, the chip starts over, so that's the reset condition. So if we have four chips in a row, we need to send 24 bits to each chip. If after that 24th um, bit, we hold the line low for 50 microseconds, the next 24 that we send would start over at the very beginning of the line of all of our chips. So we've got um, uh, three times eight bits for each uh, WS2812B uh, that represents the color. Um, and then we'll have, uh, in this case, we'll do four. We'll have four of these chips in a row, but we could have more or less. Um, so this is the number of bits that it would take uh, to represent the color of all four LEDs. Um, but each one kind of needs a time that's high and a time that's low. So we'll have two states per bit. So this is the number of uh, states that we're going to have, how many high and low transitions there will be per bit. So sending those bits is relatively easy. If we had an array that represented uh, this amount of time and then this amount of time for one color bit, and then the next color bit was say a high bit and a low bit, so we saved this amount of time and then this amount of time, and we did that uh, we made that array that stored all of these times, so this would be time 0, and this would be time 0.35 microseconds. This would be time uh, 1.6 plus 0.3 microseconds, so this is something like 2 microseconds. And then this is something like 3.6 microseconds, and then this is something like 3.9 microseconds. We could very easily loop through an array that says uh, wait until a timer says it's this amount of time and invert our pin. Wait until it's this amount of time, invert the pin. Wait until it's this amount of time, invert the pin. So that'll be the very end of our function that says um, uh, spit out all of the bits that turn on the colors. So the harder part is going to be make an array that contains all of those times. Let's look at the uh, example code in the C file. So one tricky thing is that the amount of time we need to wait uh, is, is rather tight in tolerance, but every time we add a line of code to our C file, uh, it takes a bit longer to run. So this amount of time, uh, 15 clock cycles and 65 clock cycles, um, is kind of tunable. So if you notice that uh, after an hour of running, your uh, LEDs are out of sync and they're no longer the correct color. Maybe you need to make one of these numbers uh, one smaller to account for the code that's running, say, an extra clock cycle for an if statement or something. Um, so I found that these two numbers worked best for my timing. The clock of the pick is running at 48 megahertz, and that's a nice resolution. Um, so what we're going to use is instead of using the core timer to do the delay in between the highs and lows, 
uh, we'll set timer 2, which is another timer inside of the PIC, to run also at 48 megahertz, which is twice as fast as the core timer. So 15 48 megahertz uh, delays is the amount of time a low happens, and 65 is the amount of time a high happens. So you need to set up timer 2 uh, with a prescaler of 1 so that it, it ticks at 48 megahertz. And uh, the PR2 value is how high that number gets before it rolls back to zero. So uh, timer two and PR2 are 16-bit numbers. So their maximum number is 65535. This is usually used for interrupts, so we're not really using it for this uh, for, for interrupts, but we do want to make sure it counts as high as it can before it goes back to zero. We'll start it at zero and we'll turn it on. And then you need to choose any digital output pin uh, to run this. I happen to use B6, but pretty much any pin will do. So here's the main function. Uh, WS2812B set color. It takes in an array of colors and the number of uh, elements of that array. And what you need to do is save the amount of time that passes in between the high and low bits into this array uh, delay times. And so the delay times here, uh, because we're in C, we can't dynamically change this amount. Uh, I've left space for five LEDs. So each LED is uh, eight bits per color, three colors each, and it takes uh, two states uh, for each bit. If you happen to buy some more NeoPixels from somewhere else, uh, just change this number so that you can drive more of them. There'll be a little caveat about that later. So we're going to start the initial time at zero, and then if there is a, um, if we need to do a low bit, a logical low bit, logical low bit means wait this amount of time, sorry, this amount of time with the pin high and this amount of time of the pin low. And if the next pit, bit that we need to output as a logic high, we'll wait this amount of time when the pin is high and this amount of time when the pin is low. So that's the data that's going to be stored inside of the delay times array. So we'll start it at zero. And then what we need to do is we'll loop through every single LED that we have and every single bit that's in the three colors. And the most significant bit comes out first. So we'll uh, take the 8-bit number, uh, say uh, C of 0 dot R is the amount of red, and we'll shift the bits over so we get the most significant bit. And if it's a 1, we're going to uh, take the previous time, the first was 0, and we're going to add this amount of time, and that's how long the pin is going to be high, and then we'll add this amount of time, that's how long the pin will be low. But if the bit was a 0, we'll do the opposite, We'll wait a shorter amount of time with the pin high and a longer amount of time with the pin low. So we need to loop through every bit in red and then once you've completed this if else statement copy it and do it again for green and then do it again for blue. That'll be 24 bits that represents the first LED and then this will loop over all of the LEDs. So now we've got this array delay times and we're going to sit inside of uh, another for loop so the number of bits that we have collected um, we're going to wait until that first delay time and we'll invert our pin. Then we'll wait until the next delay time, invert the pin, delay until the next time, invert the pin. And that will generate the square wave that commands the LED strip. Then we'll set the pin low and we'll wait uh, 50 microseconds. That way if we immediately try to write to the LEDs again, uh, we've done the reset condition and the next time we write we'll start with the first LED in the strip. So one more function that I added um, was the uh, hue saturation brightness to RGB converter. So if you imagine uh, every possible color on a circle uh, where uh, yellow turns into green to blue to purple to red to yellow back to green, uh, the input to this function hue represents what angle you are on that circle. Saturation represents uh, how gray are you. So this is a number from uh, 0 to 1, where 1 is full color and 0 would be full gray, or just black and white. And then brightness would be how bright or intense are these LEDs. So that's a number from 0 to 1. So hue is a number from 0 to 360. That's the color. Saturation is how colorful it is, and brightness is, of course, the brightness. And we don't have to really change this. Uh, I just found this online somewhere. It's a nice little conversion of one number into RGB. So what you would need to do is take advantage of that function to generate your colors. Then in a loop, set each color probably uh, 30 or 60 degrees out of phase and update the color. 
and then you'll get something like this, uh, a rainbow pattern. So each of these is actually doing the exact same thing, just off in phase in that color wheel. And they're nice and bright, most painful. You could cover this up with a piece of paper or tissue paper to diffuse it, or just set the brightness lower. So this could be tricky to debug because the pulses that are coming out um, are too fast for the end scope. So when you're at the um, one you know, microsecond or smaller per pulse, the end scope's only sampling at four uh, samples per microsecond. So you're really not catching it. Um, so if you do want to debug whether the bits are coming out in the right order, slow down those delays. So add a factor of 10 to the high time and the low time. Then you'll be able to see it on your oscilloscope and you can just check to see um, to, is the proportion of high to low correct and are the bits coming out most significant to least significant and things like that. Uh, but if you feed that into the LEDs, they won't turn on or if they do, they'll do something random because they really need that very specific bit rate. So once you think that the uh, ratio is correct and the bit, like the ones and the zeros are correct, put them back at the correct speed, feed that into the LEDs and you should be able to set the color. Another thing that's helpful is displaying uh, integer values and bit levels on your LCD screen. Uh, that way you can check like how many elements were in my array and is my code updating at the right rate. Uh, give yourself a heartbeat either with an LED or on your LCD uh, to indicate, yes, I was telling these LEDs to change color. And if they're not, I know that my pick isn't frozen. Something else must be wrong.